The Free Gaza Movement said one of its boats, the Dignity, was rammed by Israeli gunboats today in international waters. Activists with the Free Gaza Movement are attempting to sail to Gaza with over three tons of medical supplies requested by Palestinian doctors. Passengers include former Congress member Cynthia McKinney. There is a need for the medical supplies that are on this boat. There is a need for international attention. And perhaps most importantly, there is a need for the people in the United States to understand that every piece of rubble that is there in that strip of land is caused by U.S. weapons. And the insistence on administration after administration of transferring weapons of mass destruction to parts of the world, and those weapons are then used to hurt and kill people. The death toll in Gaza has reached at least 375 as Israel's attack on Gaza has entered its fourth day. More than 1,600 Palestinians have been wounded and hospitals are running out of medicines and other products needed to treat them. On Monday, Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak said Israel is in a, quote, war to the bitter end against Hamas and its kind. Israel's rejected calls for a ceasefire and Israeli troops and tanks continue to mass on the border of Gaza, preparing for a possible ground invasion. Israel's declared the area around the Gaza border a closed military zone, ordering out journalists. Earlier today, Israeli warplanes dropped at least 16 bombs on five government buildings in Gaza, destroying them and starting several fires. An Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza killed two Palestinian sisters, age 4 and 11. The girls were killed when they left their house to dump the family's garbage. On Monday, an Israeli airstrike destroyed a home in the Jablia refugee camp, killing five sisters. The five girls were between 4 and 17 years old. In another incident, eight Palestinian students, ages 18 to 20, were killed while waiting for a U.N. bus to take them home. The United Nations said at least 64 Palestinian civilians have died since Saturday. The Israeli attacks have not prevented Palestinian militants from firing rockets into southern Israel. On Monday, Palestinians fired at least 70 rockets, killing two Israeli civilians and a soldier. The dead included an Israeli woman in the town of Ashdod, who was killed from shrapnel wounds while taking cover from incoming rockets at a bus stop. The Israeli death toll since Saturday now stands at four. This is Israeli President Shimon Peres. The situation is simple. Some of the Gazian people are saying, why doesn't Israel respect the ceasefire? One may think that Israel started the fire. He didn't start the fire. It's not a symmetric fire. If the people in Gaza want to live in peace, if the people in Gaza want to enjoy free passages, there is a simple thing they have and can do. Stop shooting. At the United Nations, U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon harshly criticized both Israel and Hamas. He condemned what he called Israel's excessive use of force in Gaza. Both Israel and Hamas must halt their acts of violence and take all necessary measures to avoid civilian casualties. A ceasefire must be declared immediately. They must also curb their inflammatory uh, rhetoric. Only then can dialogue start. On Capitol Hill, Democratic Congress member Dennis Kucinich has called on the United Nations to establish an independent inquiry of Israel's war against Gaza. In a letter to Ban Ki-moon, Kucinich wrote, quote, the attacks on civilians represent collective punishment, which is a violation of Article 33 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. The perpetrators of attacks against Israel must also be brought to justice, but Israel cannot create a war against an entire people in order to attempt to bring to justice the few who are responsible. Protests against the Israeli attack have been held across the globe. In Lebanon, tens of thousands of Hezbollah supporters rallied in Beirut to condemn Israel. In Egypt, thousands of demonstrators denounced Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak for not helping the Palestinians in Gaza. In Amman, Jordan, protesters burned the American and Israeli flags. Here in this country, three women with the Atlantic Life community were arrested outside the Israeli embassy in Washington on Monday. The women Women were arrested after they approached the gate of the embassy holding signs that said, Peace, stop the killing, and stop the war on the children.
Meanwhile, in Chicago, police are investigating an attack on one of the city's oldest synagogues. A Molotov cocktail was thrown against the wall of Temple Shalom on Monday. The incident caused minimal damage. No one was injured.